Have you ever wondered about the chemical companies, their products, markets, their stock, and how are they doing in the industry? Let's check it out. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Remember that in this channel, we'll talk about chemical and process engineering for both students and professionals. So if you want to boost your knowledge in these topics, you are in the right place. Talking of which, let's talk about the chemical companies, their stocks, how are they doing in the markets, and what are their main products and services. As you can imagine, we are going to be focusing our attention into companies that may be producing basic chemicals or specialty chemicals or anything related towards chemical engineering in the industry. Now, it's very important to say that I will be focusing my attention in the market cap, not the total revenue, not the total sales and chemicals, not the size or I don't know, whatever you may think of big companies. I'm going to be focusing my attention solely on market cap. Let's get started, guys. So number one will be Linde. And I'm pretty sure that you have heard about Linde. It's one of the chemical gases or let's say industrial gases that are being produced nowadays. It's a huge company. And actually it was a company from Germany, but now it is located in the UK. It's something that we need to kind of discuss is that even though you may have operations in one place, you may have some management operations in other places, you may have other companies or sub companies that are located in different places, mostly for the global operations, but also for taxes purposes and many other things. Nonetheless, let's focus with Linde right now. Okay, as you can see, this is a globally active industrial group headquartered in Dublin. So once again, whenever you hear uh, Ireland or Dublin, it's something about taxes, especially because we know that Ireland is not this huge industrial complex center. So mostly it's because of that, especially whenever talking about Europe. As you can see, and operational headquarters in Guildford, UK. So that's kind of interesting. So you have the global active industrial group in Dublin, yet you have the operational headquarters in Guildford, UK, and you have a lot of companies in all over the world. So mostly in Germany, but of course, whenever you talk about a huge complex, it's pretty sure that Linde has at least some operations there, or at least they lease or they prepare some industries that produce the nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, the ammonia, and all of these gases. So you can see here, Lindescore business are process plants that extract or produce gases. So this is the interesting part right here. So whenever you're talking about chemical engineering, you know that you are going to be working most likely with industrial gases. Either you're going to be using them or you're going to be producing them. If you are going to be using them, you need to get them. It's not so straightforward to simply say, I'm going to connect the pipeline to certain gases. You need to have a service provider or a chemical plant that works in this. And Lindy is exactly what they do. They prepare these little plants, depending on what you need. They're going to be designing and operating the plants. And very importantly, if you are, let's say, a petrochemical plant, many times you will want maybe to produce hydrogen gas, treat carbon monoxide, you want to use syn gas, and many other things that are pretty core of the petrochemical operations, Linde is also there to help you. So let's quickly check out the market cap. As you can see, it has been growing steadily. Actually, if you are all about finance, you know that on the long run, it's the best bet you can do. Uh, typically, these type of industries will eventually grow and grow, but for sure, 2018, has been great. Let's go here. Yeah, March 2020, something that you need to pay attention is when COVID hit, especially in the US and Europe. So you're going to see a decrease right here, which is actually here. But what I really love about these things are, especially what I have seen or noted in the industries is that in industries not only recover from this, but they are actually growing faster. Not for all companies for sure, but definitely something that I have noted that especially tech companies or companies that are working towards clean energies or fuels, alternative fuels or so, are growing as crazy. Now let's check out how it's going. So literally from 2020 all the way to the end of 2021, it's almost 60%. So from let's say lowest point, 90 all the way to 174 it's almost twice so that's kind of crazy 
If you were to take the dip, invest on it, you will have twice in less than two years. Okay, now let's go to company number two, which is Merck. Maybe you have heard about it, maybe not. It's actually, I will say it's not the very first chemical company that you imagine, but definitely it's one of the biggest ones. And of course, very important for all the pharmaceuticals and all the biotech that they are doing right now. With a market cap of $110 billion, the stock price is currently at $253 currently located in Germany. Okay, so in this specific case, we're going to be using Wikipedia to check out what are the main products. So they use liquid crystals. If you want to check out, go for it. Life sciences, performance chemicals, bioprocessing solutions, which is the interesting part of this industry, I will say. Small molecules, biopharmaceuticals. Overall, you will say this is a pharmaceutical company. Let's go back here. And as you can see, once again, you see this increase in the stock. And let's go for March. Yeah, you can see from 56 all the way to 46. Now, this is actually even greater than Lindis Group. So for sure, it's worth mentioning that if you were to invest in these type of companies, it will be great. And with COVID, we know that any pharmaceutical or anything related towards Medicare or, or medical consumption or medical products is growing as crazy especially the bio aspect of it. So right now, I'm not pretty sure if you know about the technologies that they are using, but it's very hardcore biotech. So definitely worth spending a little bit more time on what are biopharmaceuticals and whether or not it should be great to invest either once times, such as going for a job or making a career in this industry, or maybe even as an investment. Okay, number three, very quickly, I just want to check out Savic, which technically speaking is not a chemical company, rather a oil and gas and petrochemical industry, let's say from Saudi Arabia. Remember that the one of the largest reserves of oil are there. So as you can imagine, it will be like the main core of the oil and gas products. As any oil and gas industry, this is very cyclical. It has a lot of ups, down, chaotic something you may not want to invest, especially as a career. Of course, if you are in the Middle East, it may sound logical to go for oil and gas, but overall, I will say the industry is changing very rapidly and who knows how the clean fuels are going to be getting here. They may come earlier than expected, or maybe oil and gas is still a safe bet for the 40, 50, 60 years to come. Now let's talk about Air Liquid, which is number four in our list with a market cap of $82 billion, uh, current stock at $175. And yeah, as the name implies, it's Air Liquid, liquid air. You can imagine that the air being liquefied or cryogenic distillation and all that. So main products were of course oxygen and nitrogen, but currently they are all about industrial gases. Now, as stated before, Linde was the top company, so it kind of makes sense that Air Liquid is uh, kind of near that area or also in the industry getting advantage of the needs of the industry. So what I want to do quickly is to check out a little bit on the industry and go to the actual products and yeah, pretty straightforward. Industrial gases and fine chemicals. Let's go and check out the stock, which is what we want to check. And once again, from 60, almost 70 billion back in 2003, then the crisis, guys. So remember, guys, if you were to check out this little area, maybe all the way to 2012, it will be like, well, it didn't grow that much. But in the long run, so look how from 2012 to 2016 was a great business. For sure, this is the pandemic, not as strong as the 2008, 2009 crisis. So very interesting to see that and it's still growing. So definitely an industry worth checking out as an engineer to make a career, but also as an investor. Now, company number five, it's a Japanese company, which to be honest, guys, I didn't remember, or at least I haven't heard that much in the recent years. And I'm pretty sure that maybe 10 to 15 years ago, it was not the company that popped up to mind whenever thinking about Japanese chemical company. And I'm talking about Shin Etsu Chemicals. It's actually a very huge company, 72 billion market cap. And let's check out what do they do. So essentially what they do is chemicals, special chemicals, semiconductor silicons, electronics, and functional materials. Japan has a lot of electronics and of course produces a lot of computers, a lot of, uh, a lot of mobile phones, a lot of TVs 
camera and so on. So for sure, this company is a great deal. Now let's check out on the stock. And something that I see is that actually you could say that this company has been growing steadily, but slowly. And 2016 may not have been the best year, but since 2017 was growing up, then a little bit decline and eventually the pandemic hits. And as stated before guys, something happened with the pandemic that has been growing a lot of companies. So as you can see from here, the stock almost doubled since the pandemic. So check out all the, the growth from 2010 all the way to 2017. So it's nothing compared to what has been growing on the last months. Once again, we're going to be talking about air and industrial gases. And it's time now for an American company, which is called Air Products and Gases. Yes, very creative guys, but ignore the name guys. Let's focus on the actual stock. And actually I need to confess you guys that I really like this company. I have some ETF uh, that I have been investing and one of the core business are bulk chemicals, uh, bulk materials, and this company appears everywhere. And because of that, I am kind of familiar with the growth of this company. So let's check it out. We have here the stock, as the name implies, Air Products and Chemicals is an American manufacturer of industrial gases, various industrial gases. The company produces semiconductors, materials, refinery hydrogen, and other chemicals. Nonetheless, what I want to check out here, guys, and this is very important, especially for you that may not have been in the last uh, recession, which was in 2008, Everything was growing normally and then it came and it destroyed maybe one, two years of the industry. So let's say check out the price was about 21 billion market cap 2011. So three years required to obtain the same value. But the interesting part right here, which we talk about a lot of the pandemic, but the pandemic doesn't seem to hit that hard in the industry. And you can see that in the market cap, but not only that, it also favored the exponential growth of this industry. So for sure, industrial gas is something that you can bet either professionally or as a financial bet. So the next one is for sure the classical chemical company that we all know. We know it's the huge behemoth, it's a monster, and we all may want to work there. And I'm talking about BASF or BASF or BASF, whatever name you use, that's okay. Now this is a chemical company that has been for sure more than 100 years. They know what they're doing. They work with chemicals, basic chemicals, mostly specialty chemicals. Okay, so now that we are in the wiki of BASF, I want to check out directly all the products. So they have chemicals for sure. They have plastics, uh, they have polymers, they have performance chemicals, which are essentially chemicals used within the industry in order to improve chemical production or any other product that require chemicals, catalysts, coatings, crop technology, which that is a very interesting topic to discuss later on maybe. And actually guys, I would recommend you to check out the wiki from BASF. It's a very important company that you may want to learn how they structure, what are the businesses and how do they buy and sell companies and how these are like very huge conglomerates, how try to understand how do they work. So now let's check out more on to the actual market cap of BASF. And you can see it's not the typical graph that I have been showing you guys that it's always steadily growing slowly and then the pandemic hit and they are now exponentially growing. No, actually, I don't want to commit or say anything with respect to BASF. So that will be all up to you guys. What I want to do is not to finish the eight, nine and ten companies, which will be the Zika, Bayer and Wanghua chemicals. Uh, what I want to do is to explore other companies, other regions, other countries, and especially the market caps. So, so let's go and quickly check them out. Okay, very quickly, Sika, Bayer, and Wanghua, just for the sake of finishing the top 10. Sika is actually a ceiling and I think insulin materials and construction material chemicals. And as you can see, once again, if we were to take the picture back in the day, it will be slow, but I don't know, man, something happened. Right here, the pandemic hits and eventually they are growing huge. So either you can think this is a bubble or it's going to burst or maybe they just figure out how to aggressively expand. Now talking about Bayer, we all know this is a German company that produces chemicals, but more importantly, pharmaceuticals. And I don't have any comments for this. Once again, I'm not quite sure what has been happening. As stated before, pharmaceuticals is right now a very strong 
position to have and as you can see this has been decreasing in market cap i haven't researched that much buyer it's something that i haven't been checking out recently so i cannot make a comment on this and one Hua chemicals as stated here it's also a chemical company from china once again the pandemic effect is right here you can see it it was growing and then suddenly goes back and grows like a beast now let's check out other companies and regions so what the first thing i want to do is go maybe with india which is a very important place for chemical manufacturing so we have right here upl once again doing great you can see here actually the the pandemic hit very very strongly but they are recovering quite well now let's check out pi industries once again the same effect pandemic hits then they grow let's go for companies that sound Axon Novel sounds familiar, Formosa, this chemical and mining society, Covestry is also an important one. What else do we have here? Clariant for sure. Oh, love the chemical, very important chemical company in Korea. So BioCrop Science sounds interesting and BASF sounds interesting because of the India aspect. And for now, I think this is good enough. Let's go and check out Axon Noble, Dutch paint and coating company. Pandemic effect, and they are recovering, not as wildly as other companies. So Formosa Chemicals is a very important chemical company, or let's say a plastic company from Taiwan. Unfortunately, they have not been recovering lately. Sociedad Química y Minera, this is actually from Chile. I'm not quite sure. I think this is actually a private company. What they do, as the name implies, is mostly on chemicals and mining. And, well, these seem to be the golden years. Then the pandemic hit, and once again, they are recovering. So many companies appear to have been affected by the pandemic, and eventually they are not only growing like normally or as expected, but they are doing great. So Clariant, very important company from Switzerland it's also from uh, chemicals as they have been doing apparently not that great let's continue with Lotte chemicals this is also a very important chemical company from Korea decrease overall decrease but then the pandemic hits and it started to grow not that much as we would like bio crop science is also an important aspect on bio industries as stated before guys you have a lot of companies within companies and sub companies. This is one specific business by crop sciences, mostly towards agrochemicals. And as you can see, agrochemicals is doing just great. So those were the companies I wanted to show you guys on market cap sizing, not that much in how much do they do on sales or how much do they sell in kilotons or megatons or whatever. I want to show you how companies are doing in the financial markets. Of course, have a little bit uh, an idea on how are they doing overall. So if someone asks you, is the chemical industry doing great or doing awesome or is it stagnant or doing bad, you already now know the answer. And that will be, yes, chemical industry is doing fine. Being a chemical engineer is still promising and we are still useful for society. So guys, I was not sure if you wanted to hear a little bit on finances and chemical companies, but I say, why not? Uh, I have certain comments on other industries and also I want to prepare something more on the finance aspect of chemical industries. If you like it, please let me know in the comment section. Also click like button, it really helps. It shows me uh, numerically that people is actually interested on these topics, so I will gladly invest in these type of topics. Future ideas I have on finance and chemical engineering will be maybe the future of electrical, batteries, finances, companies investing, maybe a little bit on pharmaceuticals, uh, companies on biotech, and also what are the typical ETF or exchange traded funds that contain chemical companies. How well are they doing? Is it worth to invest in chemicals or is it better to invest in the top 500 companies? That will be interesting to know. On my behalf, that will be it. Guys, I'll see you in the next video.